Welcome back, everybody. In this video, I want to do a little bit of work with formatting. So we did a lot of work um, in this last video with actually using formulas and um, working with numbers. So now I want to look about look at displaying those numbers um, and making things easier to read. So we did a little bit already, but there is so much that you can do um, in Excel. And like I've said so many times, sometimes you just want to just play around with the data and, and give it a try. So one way that you can format your cells, and again, there's so many ways to do the same stuff in Excel. So if you have another way that you like to do it, that's fine. Um, but up here under the home feature, you have the number feature and you see right there general. And that is how Excel typically defaults its cells, just to kind of do a general formatting. Um, but you can change that. And I've already told you in the last video how you can change the percent there, right? So we use the percent feature. So you can see I already changed it to percentage, um, but you don't have to. If you put it in the general form, then you're using the decimal version. You can click the percent button to change to percents. And then you can also increase your number of decimal places or decrease your number of decimal places. So there's a lot of ways that you can just tweak that information right there. Um, here, this is your accounting format. So, you know, you can select a column and maybe use that accounting format. Uh, let's not do it with this one. Let's do maybe the next column. There we go. Um, using that accounting format. So notice how when I first did it, um, I had all these pound signs, right? These hashtags. It just means that my data is longer than my cell is allowing. So I had to make that column a bit wider so I could see it. So with the dollar sign here, it does exactly what you think. It adds in those dollar signs to the numbers. So again, depending on who your audience is, that may be really helpful um, for them to see that. It also adds in the comma features and it gives you two decimal places, which is standard for money, right? So that is that accounting function there. So currency function, again, is going to be uh, pretty similar here. So you have accounting, you have currency, um, and again, just looking at a couple of those different features, and you can go ahead and go in and play around. Let's go ahead and play around with this one a little bit. All right, so there's my currency feature. And again, see how the negative sign comes in front of the dollar sign there. In my accounting feature, again, just to show you a little bit of the change, negatives are in parentheses. So this is more stand standard for accounting. Um, so instead of having a negative sign, they will use parentheses, which is a deduction. So it means like you're below where you should be, right? You're negative. Um, versus if I go back to currency format, that negative is in front of the dollar sign. Or if I just go to general format, I don't have the dollar signs, I just have the negative sign. So again, it depends on what is easier. Um, sometimes the accounting format is nice. I think the parentheses are clearer um, that this is negative. Sometimes those negatives are really hard to miss. Um, but again, you want to think about your audience. If your audience is not familiar with that notation, they may not, may not understand that. Um, so accounting and currency feature are both good. You just want to think about who your audience is. Um, if you have a lot of negatives, then perhaps the accounting feature may be easier for those to read. Um, you can change the color too, right? Maybe you wanna highlight negatives in red and you can go ahead and, and change that as well. So we've talked about playing around with color previously, so you can add those changes in too. Um, this button here I haven't shown you yet is the comma style. So again, if you would like to add commas in automatically, you can do that. I have to keep expanding my columns here um, and that will add the column, the commas in, but without the dollar sign. So that could be helpful too, if you don't need, um, you know, as much, um, if you don't need the dollar signs, if everybody understands that I can change my decimal. So if I don't need those decimal places, I can go ahead and decrease those or I can increase them as well. Um, and again, you can play around with those features to make it most appealing visually um, and also understandable. So again, who is your group? Do you use decimal places? Should those be in there because they need to be? Or are you typically always rounding to the nearest hole? So the decimal places are not needed. They're just extra space that we don't need to worry about. Um, so you can think about that as well. 
going to my leading sheet for documentation. Again, you can format dates and times. I know we've seen this a little bit already, but just kind of a reminder. So I'm just gonna put the date in here. I'm gonna call it December uh, 31st, let's say 2022, um, cause I'm kind of looking at year data. So maybe it's the end of the year. And you can see in the uh, format here, Excel will change it. So it says 31 December 22. But if I don't like that, I can go ahead and tweak that. So again, over here under the number feature, I can change that and use the short date or I can use a long date format. So if I wanna actually have the longer date, Saturday, December 31st, I can put that in there. Uh, if I want a shorter date, I can do that um, and so on. So there's again, different ways that you can um, change your date and, and formats that you can use there too. So that's some of the just kind of fun things that you can um, play around with. All right, other things that I can do for formatting. Um, one of them is it's the alignment of the cells. So notice here you have different alignments. So this is at the bottom, meaning that your text is on the bottom of the cell. And I'm going to just make one of my rows a little taller here. So I made it shorter. Hang on, let's try that again. Let's make this one taller. So you can see here how it's at the bottom now. Um, and I make my column a little wider too. So you can see that the data is at the bottom. And if I put center, it makes it in the center. Or if I put top, it makes it on the top. Now I have the whole row selected. So that's why the whole row is changing. But I can also just change an individual cell if I want to and just click that cell. Um, you also have alignment here. So I can make it a left alignment, a center, or a right uh, for each cell as well. You can change the indenting um, here too. So um, you know, here I have, so let's make it a left alignment. I can change the dent indenting over or kind of push it over to the right. Um, and you can do that there. So you can guys can play around a little bit with that feature. Um, this changes the orientation of the text. So maybe I would like that text to, let's do a different one. Let's do author. Uh, maybe I'd like to change that text. I want to make it go vertical. So you can see that I made that text go vertical now instead. Um, and again, you can kind of play around with this. Um, I can angle it. Again, I can rotate it, et cetera. So this can be really helpful, particularly if you're um, running out of space in one direction, you can try changing the direction, right? So now I made it vertical so I can make maybe my columns much narrower um, and just kind of you know play around with it that way too and see. You can also, See, so go this way. Um, let's find a better one. Maybe I could do this one. So this feature here, I'll make my column a little shorter. Um, I can wrap my text as well. Okay, I don't think this is a good one. Let's try this one. There we go. That's a good one to do. Um, so it wraps my text. So meaning that it kind of makes it more in like a paragraph form. So it's not going super long. And that was this feature here too. And then the other thing that you can do as well is you can merge. So maybe I want to merge a couple cells together. Um, let's just put something in here. I'm gonna put author, um, and I'm just gonna make something up. Let me just put, I'll put my name. How about that? We'll just put Stephanie Pollard. Let me put my name in there. Um, so let's say I wanted to merge cells together. I could do that too. So there's different ways that you can do that. So you can select the two cells you want to merge. And this button here is your merge feature. You can also, um, you know, right click and do format cells down here. That works as well. Um, but if I use here, you have some different options. So merge cells is your most basic one. It will just merge those two cells together. The only problem is, is it only keeps the data in the top left cell. So if I merge these, I make one big cell, but the data in the other cells goes away. I'm gonna hit the back button to undo that. Um, I can also go ahead and merge that and merge its center so that the author word goes in the center of the cells. And again, don't forget the other box is going to go away though. And you can just kind of, you know, play around a little bit um, with this information and just try different merges and, and see if you like it or don't like it. Uh, let's say you decide you don't want to merge the cells anymore. You can't unmerge them, uh, but the data would be gone. You don't get that data back in the second column. So just keep that in mind. Even if you merge and then unmerge, that data is gone. 
So it only keeps the leftmost piece. So even if I wanna do these four, for instance, let's say I'm gonna right click here and do format cells, just to do it a different way. You can kind of come in here this way under alignment there and hit merge cells here. And again, you'll see that everything else has appeared except for that upper left cell. Um, so your merge feature is here under alignment, or you can also right click and do that format cell piece and get the merging that way as well. All right, but you can see all my other data went away. So let's see if I can backtrack this a little bit. There we go. All right, we can also go ahead and add some borders and things. So let's talk about that. So let's say I would like to add a border around my name. Um, again, you can always right click and do format cell. And then go up here, you can change the font, you can change the border, the fill color, um, and all that stuff. So maybe you want to outline the cells, you can do that. I can do a double bar here when I outline, or a thicker bar, I can kind of change what I want this to look like. I can change the color, maybe I want to do it in red, um, and then you'll, you'll have that piece here. Right, let's see, let's try this a little bit better. All right, and there is that outline. Um, it's diagonal because I have that text tilted. So that's why you're seeing that diagonal piece there. Um, if I change it to vertical, it changes it that way. I can rotate and so on. So um, you can go back through and, and read and fix all that if you need to, just playing around here. Um, so you can go ahead and add in those borders as well. Um, and if you want to do it from up here, it's right here. So you can change borders this way too um, and add in, you know, all borders. I can add in um, thick outline and so on and just kind of play around with those different features, right? If I select more than one cell, I can select as all borders and have those cells individually outlined, or maybe I just want the outside border outlined um, and so on. So I can go ahead and kind of tweak those as I go through. And then I'm just outlining, you know, the overall edge. So again, I really encourage you to kind of just play around. That's the easiest thing you can do here is just to play around with some of that formatting, um, with the borders, with the indenting and all that stuff and uh, see what you like, see what looks good. Um, if you want to do a lot of editing too, and not just kind of one thing at a time, let's say I want to edit this cell um, right here. I can also go to my home under font. I see this little arrow and this will expand the whole thing out. Um, and again, you can go ahead and change. I can change the font. I'm going to make it bold. I'm going to change the size. I can change the color of that font. Maybe I want to make it green. Um, I can change the fill. Maybe I want the background to be yellow. Again, I know this doesn't look good, but you can see you can really just play around with it. So I got to it by using this little arrow here. Um, and again, you can also right click and do format cells that way and the same box opens up. So you don't have to know every single way, um, you know, to go through and change things, but you just need to know at least how to do, you know, at least one way, right, that you can kind of edit something here. And I can add a, you know, a, a box around there, add a border and so on. So go in, play around. Um, don't do this. This looks terrible, I think. But, you know, find something that's visually appealing. Um, and that's a great way to highlight things. So maybe once my sheet is done, maybe now I'm going to go in. Maybe I would like to highlight these categories. And maybe I would like to change the background color. Um, maybe I'll just make them a soft green, for instance, right? Or maybe I want to... Um, make them, I don't know, a darker green, something a little bit more bold, but now I can't really read my writing. So maybe I would make my writing white, right? So we can go through and we can really tweak to make our report come to life and make it also easier to read, right? So like I said, I went in and I highlighted and made that negative piece 
red to draw the attention. Maybe I want to make this one red as well, right? So once I have the, you know, my work done, now I'm going to go in, I'm going to use color, I'm going to use formatting. Maybe I use borders as well, um, different um, fonts or sizes to, again, make a visually appealing worksheet. And I would say visually appealing. We don't want to just add things to add them. They don't want to be overly busy or distracting. Um, color, formatting, borders, um, fill color, anything should be used to help the reader better understand our data, not to distract from it.